Okay, first I want to uh, continue a bit more on uh, what hardware we need to create a, a multi-touch table. So first, uh, the camera. Um, well, usually you could use a, a simple webcam, but often consumer cameras uh, contain an infrared blocking filter. So um, if you are going to use a normal USB camera, try to check if you can um, dismount the lens and hopefully you can uh, buy a separate one or just a scratch off the infrared layer. Um, next, you also will need something like an infrared bandpass filter because uh, you, you only want the camera to see the infrared, not, not uh, all the other uh, yeah, stuff like uh, the projection itself. So we, at the moment we are using, uh, I believe, some overexposed negatives. It's, it's, it's a cheap trick to, uh, to fake a bandpass filter. And well, some extra if you have the money. I would prefer to uh, use a firewire camera just because of the latency, because we're, using, because we're creating a technique where uh, direct interaction is very important. You want to keep the latency, of course, as low as possible. And use USB cameras often buffer uh, some more images, uh, which, which introduce a latency. Uh, so that's why a firewire camera would be preferred. And yeah, well, there are some um, restrictions on the resolution as well. The higher, the better. But the high means also um, that your computer needs to process uh, more information. So uh, that's something you should uh, well check out as well. Um, the digital projector. Um, here at the SoCo, we're using a special uh, digital projectors with, which have a short throwing distance. Um, ordinary uh, office beamers usually need a, a, a large distance to project such a, a large uh, image. Um, well, you could use uh, an office beamer, uh, but then you, you really need something like a mirror and preferably a front surface mirror to prevent um, ghosting. So, because uh, use normal mirrors have their reflective uh, layer on the back side. So, if you're using a regular mirror, you will probably see the, the image like double. Um, next is um, the video processing uh, in TouchLip. Um, well, for our video processing, we're using uh, a free uh, open source tool called TouchLip, which uh, provides you uh, with multiple filters to improve uh, the um, <laughs> captured image and to do some blob tracking. Well, it's uh, supported by most uh, modern platforms, so it should be uh, pretty easy to get it working on most computers. Um, let's take a look at uh, the FTIR chain. It's, uh, um, it's kind of a trade-off uh, if you would choose for FTIR. Um, the, com the construction um, of, of, of such table is, is a bit harder. You need extra uh, layers of materials and you need to create an array of LEDs. But the camera's source input you're getting is, is pretty clean. So that means the software doesn't need to do uh, some extra uh, distortion uh, correction. So what we see is here, uh, the left camera image is pretty clean. So we only need to filter out the background and then we have, uh, uh, well, two simple points to process, to perform uh, blob tracking on. If you compare it to, uh, by, uh, with uh, rare illumination, you can see the, the image is much more distorted. So you have to apply much more um, um, efficient correction techniques like uh, background uh, subtraction, which leaves you with some weak um, uh, blobs, which you need to amplify, and after that you can let uh, uh, TouchLip do some uh, blob tracking uh, on it. Um, the blob tracking technique we use in TouchLip is pretty easy. It, it remembers uh, the location of, of uh, the blobs in previous frames, and it just checks the distance. So the closest one is probably the same as in the last frame. And there are some, yeah, well, general properties per blob such as position and movement. It's, uh, touch slip also features some basic uh, uh, fiducial detection, so you can use uh, like markers to uh, um, yeah, 
provide objects. Um, but it's, it's not, not as stable as what, you, what we have seen last week in, uh, in the React table. Um, so I wouldn't recommend using it uh, for the moment. Well, so comparing uh, FTR with diffused illumination, it, it, it kind of all depends on um, how much you want to spend on hardware, hardware and how much you want to spend on uh, uh, doing the, the software correction. So uh, with FTR, it's, it's, you can get reliable results, but okay, hardware costs more and yeah, it's, 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 it's more difficult to create. For example, the, the silicon here also re are required for the FTR. It's yeah, it's it's a bit troublesome to to create it. So it all depends on yeah whether you want to spend time on it or you want a simple solution. Uh, for example, rare illumination, it's, it's just easier to construct, and you're getting almost the same re reliable uh, results. Plus, you have the, the choice of fiducials, which is not available on uh, FTIR. And well, we're using at the moment front illumination. It's also uh, a kind of good way to, to create multi-touch, but um, because, because environment lightning uh, conditions are so important, it's, it, it's kind of, well, sometimes succeeds, sometimes it, it, it fails. Uh, well, um, in a moment we will uh, be dividing uh, into smaller groups, so hopefully uh, we have two even uh, divided groups. Uh, one will, I believe, be creating a uh, a table on, based on front illumination, and one will try to create a table, well, <laughs> based on rare illumination. So hopefully that uh, works out uh, properly. Okay, some useful links for TouchLip for some background information. Well. These are some uh, applications uh, I developed myself. Uh, it's, uh, so hopefully in a few weeks we will be seeing some interesting interaction applications and Ralph will prob probably be demonstrating his uh, uh, news well application on this table. So I hope it's uh, going to be great. Thank you.